Welcome to the Corporate Digital Marketing Podcast, where we examine the latest digital strategies, tactics, case studies, and technologies to help you drive your brand and your career to new heights. You'll hear from a range of marketers and industry experts to help you, the corporate marketer, to take advantage of your many digital opportunities. Here's your host, digital marketing expert, published author, and regular media presenter, Peter Applebaum. Hello and welcome to episode nine of the Corporate Digital Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Applebaum, and as usual, we have quite a treat in store for you today. We're going to be speaking to a senior executive from Tourism Australia, which for those of us listening in Australia is going to offer some fascinating insights, particularly those who are marketing professionals. But also we know that we have listeners from all around the world, so it would be Wonderful to understand what the government, and that's the owner of Tourism Australia, has in store from a digital point of view to encourage visitors to come to Australia. And it's quite an extraordinary 8.5 million people come to Australia every year. What their plans are to uh, enhance their experience and to keep them coming back for more. And of course, to recommend it to their friends. So we're going to hand it over to the interview with Tourism Australia. Welcome. We're very excited to have a an industry leader in the digital space. And it's John McKenney, who's the General Manager of Digital Transformation at Tourism Australia. Welcome, John. Thank you. John, you have a fascinating background. Of all the people we've spoken to on the Corporate Digital Marketing Podcast, uh, we've never had a former CFO. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, my, I suppose my you know, path to getting to this position is not, uh, is not the most common one uh, through marketing. But I think it's the nature of digital today that it's such a fast moving industry, um, in some ways quite data driven um, in its nature and, and fundamentally some of the skill sets uh, that are required in this industry today are maybe not what were the ones in traditional marketing of the past. So I've been very fortunate here at Tourism Australia to, to be able to make the transition and, and certainly uh, enjoying the switch. And do you feel that there will be certified practicing accountants around Australia listening to this interview saying, marketing, that sounds so much more fun than accounting. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, I think, you know, there are certainly elements of our organization that feel that I have uh, joined the dark side. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly much more uh, fun to be able to, to drive some of these initiatives and, uh, and probably be more of a cost center and spending the money rather than maybe the financial controller. But you know, at, at the very core, uh, digital transformation and digital in general is all about uh, business strategy and, and, you know, businesses operating in a digital world. And, and I felt that, you know, you know, coming from a very strategic seat as a CFO, the best way to, for me to be able to influence this company was to, uh, to take on this role in digital. It's an interesting word you use, company. So obviously you're, you're working as a, at Tourism Australia as a very high profile organization. Do you see yourselves in a very corporate sense? Yeah, I think, you know, fundamentally we are you know, a Commonwealth company, effectively a, a company of the government, but, you know, we operate far more like a commercial enterprise. You know, we are very driven um, by making sure that uh, we're spending every dollar the right way. And, you know, fundamentally we've got a job to support a very fast growing and important industry in the economy, which is tourism. Um, you know, directly or indirectly, this industry employs nearly 900,000 people and, and we take that very seriously. Uh, and we feel that we operate more in a in a commercial fashion um, and much more like a commercial entity than what we do, say, than a traditional government entity. So in addition to the Commonwealth government, you obviously would have many, many stakeholders who would uh, have an opinion at the very least and probably an influence over the decisions you make. Would that be right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we have nearly 200 commercial partners here at Tourism Australia, whether that's uh, the big end of town with the airlines or right down to um, you know, your small tourism operators that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, look, everyone has an opinion. Um, there's no doubt about that, about you know, how best to sell the country. And we're very fortunate um, in our position to be able to, uh, to have that responsibility. Um, but I suppose the good news is at the moment is, is things are trending up and it, and it seems like we're doing a good job. So to that point, and, and look, we're going to be talking about data, I, I, I suspect, given, particularly given your background, John. Yeah. Um, to that point, w what are the KPIs that, that you report back, certainly from a digital point of view and overall? Yeah, so, I mean, fundamentally, from an overall um, organisation perspective, we are, are driven by um, generating as much expenditure in the economy as we possibly can. Um, Australia is not a... Um, a high volume destination, it's a high yielding destination. So all of our marketing efforts, including our digital marketing efforts, 
uh, to identify those really high yielding um, consumers who are going to ideally come to Australia, have a fantastic holiday, but leave lots of money in the economy to generate jobs and generate uh, a revenue for the Australian economy. So that's our, that's our purpose and that's what we go after. I mean, the way that that then translates into our digital activities is really three things. Our ability to find those high yielding consumers. So are we having the conversation with the right um, number of people and a growing number of people? Are those people engaged in our brand message and the story that we're telling? So which is largely measured in, in minutes of engagement across our platforms. But most importantly, we then measured against the number of leads that we're driving into the Australian tourism industry, which is, you know, really the key reason um, for why we're here. So it's, it's our job to connect those um, high yielding um, consumers all around the world and then connect them through to, to operators in Australia or potentially the traditional distribution travel agent network um, back in the source markets. And with those 200 partners that you've mentioned, do you tie in with their digital activities and vice versa? Yeah, absolutely. So certainly from an airline perspective, um, we're working very, very closely um, with a couple of partners, particularly around um, audience sharing and starting to get joint learnings across not just the audiences that are coming to our digital properties and and, and, um, digital executions, but also coming to theirs and then trying to get a combined view of those consumers so we can understand what their passion points are. Are they motivated by an adventure holiday, a nature holiday? Uh, do they want to come to Sydney? Do they want to come to Melbourne? Do they want to go to The Rock? And then being able to effectively put in front of them you know, compelling experiences that ideally will lead to them getting on an aeroplane and, and coming here and having a great time. So you mentioned audience sharing. Is that something that uh, you obviously have to, does that drill down to the actual audience and the consumers themselves? Do you get joint permission to communicate with them? Uh, so generally we're dealing um, on an anonymized basis. Um, we're not you know, full um, open you know, personal information and sharing. That's not really the nature of, of what we do. But certainly using those insights of consumer behavior across, across web properties um, is, is really important because fundamentally consumers are looking for a seamless experience. They're expecting a very personalized experience now. Um, you know, the advent of, you know, the likes of Spotify, Netflix, you know, even Airbnb, they've changed the nature of what consumers expect now um, from an experience. So for us, to, we need to be personalized. We need to be intuitive with our marketing. So it allows us to be that, you know, to understand a lot more about not just what they're doing on our platforms, but what they're doing elsewhere. So that's the fundamental reason for doing it um, is to make sure that we're getting the right information in front of people and taking some of the complexity away in planning an Australian holiday. I think it's very clever that this, the former CFO has now become the, the general manager of digital transformation because my next question was going to be, has there been any friction within the organisation as to the digital initiatives and also outside of the organisation? Look, I think uh, like all organisations, you know, whether it's globally or in Australia, you know, I think everyone's on some form of digital transformation and it has probably become the buzzword for probably the last 12 months true, to true, two true. years. Yep. I think the reality is, you know, businesses are now having to operate in a digital world. Now, whether that gets bundled up into a digital transformation role that has to, to lead the organization or not, um, it's kind of neither here nor there. You know, companies are embracing in different ways how that's, how that's done. I think it's difficult. I mean, it, organizations and change um, is always difficult. It, any sort of change is difficult. People in companies, you know, will generally tell you that they love change and they embrace it. But as humans, we're wired to actually resist it. So I think digital is, is you know, the current frontier uh, with that. But I suppose in Tourism Australia, we made a fundamental call that, you know, we either had an issue, a, a decision to not change and do nothing or embrace um, a, a broader digital initiative. And, and certainly we've been lucky and probably a little bit earlier to the party than others, which has probably put us a little bit ahead of the curve. In terms of boards and executives and other stakeholders, I think it's just a constant education piece. This is a fast moving industry and it's ever changing. So it's just trying to bring people along with you and, and largely educate people on, on some of these new ways of which you know, consumers are engaging with information and, and, and how really we have to work now if we want to be successful. And you mentioned understanding uh, the consumers more effectively. Do you overlay uh, psychological research to what consumers are interested in and, and all those types of research? Ob- yeah, options? absolutely. So, I mean, there's big, been a big shift here in Tourism Australia in the last 12 months to move away from, I suppose, traditional demographic profiling, you know, saying that, you know, we're only going to promote to people 
in the US over the age of 50 who live in four cities and, and have a passport. I mean, there's a huge range of beliefs and, and passions and drivers that are sit outside of those demographics. So fundamentally, um, what we're now starting to overlay with, with different data partners is starting to understand what really drives people. Like, you know, are they passionate about food and wine? Are they passionate about um, nature? Are they passionate about Australia's beaches? Um, what are the sort of experiences that they're looking for? So it's a much more psychographic type targeting that we're doing um, today, which is really, you know, fundamentally what it does is it means that we can tailor the experience to that individual because, you know, what might motivate me um, to get on an aeroplane will be very different to what right. might motivate you. And so what's the, the psychographic manifestation of that from a digital point of view of that profiling? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the way it, it kind of plays out essentially is, you know, what we're building up is, is segments of, of audiences, um, essentially groups of individuals, and then essentially cutting them by various passion points. So, you know, where, what, what motivates them in terms of what sort of holiday, what sort of experiences are they looking for? And then also some of the cities in Australia that they're, they're already looking um, to come to. So essentially, we, we're able to then match those things together. Um, we're also then able to understand, based on those passion points, where and how likely they are um, to travel. So that's probably, it's a complex part. Then the second and, and probably more interesting part is then when the art gets applied to that, which is then generating um, compelling marketing experiences to put in front of that consumer to ideally move them closer to purchasing a holiday so how many tourists do you have that visit australia every year uh so it's currently just north of 8.5 million so yeah 8.5 million and it's a, as we know we human beings which really sucks from a marketing point of view we're all different yeah so how do you then spin out the programs the digital programs given that there are so many different ways and, and means that people are interested in coming to australia yeah look i mean there are very different passion points but you know fundamentally everything we do here is is embedded in, in consumer research and really strong consumer research so that's our foundation we know as a core collective from our source markets the sort of things that they're looking for um, in terms of a, a holiday destination we're very fortunate here in australia as well that we have such a diversity of experiences that really if you want to go skiing if you want a beach holiday uh, if you want a great food and wine um, experience. If you want to see wildlife in the wild, you can get it all here. And depending on whether you're up in the north of the country or you're down in Tasmania, it's a pretty diverse set. So we are lucky that uh, we do have those range of offerings. Um, so it is more about just trying to, it's an ongoing iterative process about how well we can then match those experiences um, to the consumer. So you don't have 8.5 million consumer profiles, I wouldn't think. No. How many buckets, if you will, that would you have? Like oh, people look, who like beach holidays, people who like wine, et cetera. Look, we're running between 30 to 50 segments at the moment. Okay. Um, but, you know, as we learn more about the consumer, um, we expect that those will, will continue to build, build out and be refined from, from there. You know, of the 8.5 million, uh, look, across our digital platforms in the last 12 months, we've talked to roughly 32 million people, um, mm -hmm. which is translated to, I suppose, 8.5 million on the ground. But we're not expecting that all of those 8.5 million saw our work or, or hit our digital property so we think we're talking to roughly about one in four um of people who are actually getting on the ground so it's a, the ability to translate that it's a great success rate yeah that much higher number down and then effectively move them through and, and getting them here and do you look at it from a lifetime customer value perspective as well that it's like i've come to australia i might come back i might tell my friends yeah so i mean fundamentally our vision as an organization is to make ourselves um both the most desirable and memorable destination on the planet. And when we talk about desirability, we talk about that as a, how do we get that first time visibility, uh, first time visitor into the country? Um, but memorability is all about return visitation. So, you know, we know that Australia over indexes, you know, from what people expected when they, when they came here to what they actually experienced in a holiday, we completely over deliver on that but we need to be able to sell that story be able to sell the story of other travelers back to people who haven't been here or potentially about thinking about their second or third trip so that whole um element of building that out and, and effectively getting people to come back multiple times is, is critical i mean the reality is australia is a big vast land um and people need to 
effectively come here multiple times to really understand the true breadth of the country. And have you benchmarked what you do from a digital point of view against other tourist bodies or other organizations from around the world or even in Australia? Yeah, certainly we do benchmark ourselves against different different elements of it. I think what's interesting um, from a national tourism body perspective and a broader, actually even tourism industry perspective is we're all approaching digital in a very different way. So, you know, we're seeing effectively our major competition in Brand USA, um, Visit Britain, Hawaii, um, have all effectively relaunched uh, their websites over the last probably 12 to 18 months. New Zealand were a little bit ahead of that. Um, New Zealand's been pretty focused on some pretty big data and media partnerships in the last 12 months and have been doing some great work. Even at a state level, you know, South Australia have been doing some phenomenal work around data and audience um, as well. So, and then if you look at a broader CRM email multi-channel marketing program, you know, we're seeing that actually no one's really kind of cracked that um, from a national perspective, but we're seeing amazing work from obviously TripAdvisor, Airbnb in particular in that space. So the simple answer is I don't think anyone's solved the problem and, and got the full connected view of customer. I think we're all trying to solve the same problem in in different ways. But, you know, we consistently benchmark ourselves against each of those elements to work out where we should be investing next um, as we try to get to, you know, that final really well-connected um, experience end state that we're trying to achieve. Do you have a, uh, like a five-year plan or a vision as to where the organisation wants to be from a digital point of view? Yeah, we do. I mean, fundamentally, the program... Look, we launched this program probably in 2013. Um, and at that stage, it was all about, yes, we knew we needed to better understand our content and we wanted to be data-driven around our website and to understand the consumer. And we knew that data and audiences were going to be important at some point, so we bought into a, an audience management platform. Um, that's changed now. We've, you know, we're effectively now moving into much more personalised one-on-one communication with the consumer across multiple channels. So effectively, the the program has changed into a very much a, a data-led approach, um, changing the website to being a much more personalised experience, the integration of far more social content in our website. Um, but then the next, you know, I suppose, two to three years is, is really taking advantage of, of new technologies. We've already launched you know, VR and 360 video on our platform, um, but certainly starting to use artificial intelligence and some of those machine learning algorithms to help people plan their holiday are, are sort, of, sort of where we're, we're going next. And, and, you know, we've started some of those initiatives over the last couple of months, but so that'll be our focus um, or one of our focuses going forward. So, so uh, Tourism Australia is on board with marketing's shiny new things, VR and AI. Yeah, look, I, it's a dangerous, you know, the one thing I always sort of caution other marketers to do is not not go after the shiny thing, but it is, um, they're definitely the talk of, of the town. Yeah, they um, are. You know, Every podcast interview we've had, we've talked about AI and VR. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I think VR for us, um, we didn't come into it going, we should do VR or 360 video. That wasn't our approach. Our, the problem we were trying to solve for was Australia is a highly immersive destination. I think it's, when you set foot out, you know, on a beach in Australia or, or somewhere out in the outback or up in the NT, there's a certain element of this country where you just breathe it in and, you, and it's, a, it's a true sensory experience. It's very hard to explain to people who haven't, haven't been here. Um, and so I think VR and, and 360 video just allows us to, you know, have a more immersive experience. It, it's, it's better than flat photography. It's better than um, traditional video. So... You know, we didn't do VR and 360 because it was the latest buzz thing. We did it because we knew we could tell the Australian story in a new and innovative way to our consumer. Yeah. And what feedback have you had from consumers? So certainly from an engagement perspective, I mean, we've seen north of 70% uplift in engagement on our platforms. I mean, we've got people in China who are, well, I think our last um, campaign, we had an average time on our website of about 11 or 12 minutes so these are people sitting there wow, watching awesome. four to five of these um 360 vr experiences and really um, immersing themselves in it so you know fundamentally from an engagement perspective it's it's really been a game changer for us on our platforms okay to, to that point uh 
what are the most digital, most effective digital strategies that you have used? And as you say, you've had this fundamental shift from 2013, and even then it's changed again. But what, what do you find are the specific tools that are most effective for you? Yeah, so I think there's two. I mean, we've talked a lot about data already um, in this session, but I just think being driven fundamentally by that consumer at the core and trying to connect them through um, has really yielded us much better results. We're far more efficient in how we serve advertising we're far more efficient in how we're able to drive leads into the Australian tourism industry. So, you know, we're seeing, I think last financial year, we had 154% uplift in leads that we drove to the industry. And look, that's due to a number of factors, but fundamentally it's because we're being more data-driven in our approach. And we're, you know, it's a classic analogy of fishing where the fish are, but it's but actually delivering those targeted experiences. The second thing that I think has been the key to our success is, is really... Um, using our social community to help sell the country. So, you know, for as long as I've been with Tourism Australia, we've always said that, you know, Australians and travellers tell the Australian story better than we do. And and social has enabled that. So effectively, you know, through our social channels and our hashtag See Australia, we're sent three and a half thousand pieces of content every single day. Now, we used to, and still do, bundle those up and, and push them back out through social channels. But we're taking it further than that we're actually now using those to effectively stream into our website and and essentially using our you know travelers and and locals and our industry to effectively drive our our content strategy and and really enable that you know fast moving a content to our consumers so it was probably taking something it's funny saying that social's old because it's it's probably not but it was i suppose it was thinking about social in in a different way and not just thinking about social as being a channel to push out, but it was actually a way to, to source great content and then push it back out to, to people. There are people listening to this podcast who are saying, well, that's great for you guys because it's like you've got Australia and as you say, it's a highly immersive product, yep. if you will. We're marketing ball bearings or we're selling running shoes. It's like, how would how do we do it, John? Because it's like you, you've got so many advantages that the, the vast, in fairness, the vast majority of marketers don't have. Yeah, look, I think there's... That is absolutely true. And um, there's no doubt that most brands aren't in the fortunate position that we are to be sent, you know, the quality and amazing quality of content that we're sent every day. But I think there's a couple of key learnings that still apply to, to most businesses. I think, you know, the stuff we've talked about a lot around being, you know, fundamentally driven by your customer at the core um, and understanding what they need in your digital experiences um, is critical and, and continuing to learn and evolve that. I think that applies to, to nearly any business. The other thing is, you know, with any brand as well, it's it's trying to understand how the general public um, perceive your brand and if you do have positive reinforcement from, from influencers and people in the community, you know, to let your brand have some freedom and control and be able to use some of those voices. I mean, you know, it may be difficult if you're just building widgets, but, you know, for every brand, um, there is an ability to... to do some element of brand building off the basis of, of your community. It may only be a handful of people. It may not be literally the means that we talk to, but I think you know using that core concept is is still applicable. I know that you mentioned influencers. Is influencer marketing an important part of what you do, like using travel bloggers and those types of people? Yeah, travel bloggers. I mean, obviously, we have uh, what we call the Friends of Australia program, uh, which is essentially... Uh, key Australians from different industries and, and, and different um, backgrounds. So whether that's uh, sportsmen, you know, surfers, whether that's um, chefs, um, right up to the big end of town with, um, pardon the pun, with, with Chris Hemsworth, who obviously is, is our, uh, our brand ambassador. Um, you know, people still respond to that. And certainly in a number of our Asian markets, um, you know, influencers and people who are, are coming to Australia and having a holiday certainly have an impact. And, and certainly with, um, with people like Chris who really embody, you know, the Australian way of life. And, and well, every Australian male looks like him. Of course, of course, <laughs> including both of us. Obviously, that's what, obviously. That's why we're on a podcast, <laughs> not a video. That's um, exactly right. But, um, you know, fundamentally, you know, he, he embodies, um, you know, really what the country is, is about, that, that great um, laid-back lifestyle um, that um, cheeky personality, he is, he is all those elements. So, you know, in some ways the influencers help us bring out the, uh, the nation's character and, and really, um, you know, sell what we have to offer. It's been a great news story so far, John. What hasn't worked? I think the fundamental um, challenge that we've had as a, as a, 
as a destination and as a as a marketing organization is we've been great at um i suppose creating this great brand awareness and this great desire for people to come to australia so you know when we look at our research we're sort of number one or number two in most of our source markets in terms of desirability but actually converting that through into um, visitation has been a challenge for us you know i think at its core australia is a big vast complex nation and if you're don't have a huge awareness of what Australia has to offer. Putting a a holiday together for Australia is complex. And and so I think we've struggled with, you know, fundamentally people have gone, yeah, I want to go to Australia someday. But when they've gone in to start to plan it, um, there's been some complexities around that and they've probably gone to a much more familiar destination. I mean, if you think about Los Angeles, New York, London, Rome, Paris, they're a known commodity. You know, we've grown up around those things we see them in movies we know that if we go to london and spend five days there we know roughly what we're going to have to offer now this maybe isn't as big an issue for the uk consumer that's growing up on a diet of neighbors and home and away but for a us consumer who fundamentally understands that we've probably got an opera house a bridge and kangaroos hopping down yeah, the main street, a, a rock and a reef and yeah and, yeah. and obviously kangaroos hopping down the main street so um their understanding of how to put a holiday together is complex so I think that's where we've struggled. I think, though, when we look at what we're trying to solve going forward, and and this is where, you know, some of the ways to, you know, talk to people in a more one-on-one and personalized way, the ability to use um, machine learning to be able to almost generate a holiday for you based on your personal preferences, um, it takes that complexity out. So I think that's where we've we've probably let ourselves down in the past you know we've, we've had a great inspirational brand and and look you know the numbers are phenomenal like don't get me wrong but if we can solve this problem and actually make planning a holiday to australia not just a um a fun and engaging experience but also a less complex one i think we'll see a, a significant lift in in visitation do you have a, a strategy in place or you're working towards that outcome no certainly we've you know we've spent a significant um bit of time over the last 12 months really building out the next stage of our our digital strategy and it really is that um i suppose it's that utility element of our content at the core it's not just saying yeah look at this we've got a beautiful harbor or look at this it's an amazing rock um it's much more about okay great here's how you do sydney here's how you get to the rock here's what you can do around there so it's much more about helping people achieve the outcome that they want to achieve We're testing out a few different things um, with machine learning and artificial intelligence about how we connect that through, you know, using some of the learnings from retail about what is that next best offer. I mean, if you're in Sydney, there is a logical next couple of steps of what you might do next, whether that's go out to the Blue Mountains or head up uh, to Byron Bay or jump a flight to Kangaroo Island. Like, you know, we can predict largely what that next step may be based on those preferences. So in the past, we probably tried to be uh all things to all people um which probably only really you know built out that complexity of a nation so being able to deliver much more personalized experiences um tailored to the individual we think will will help solve that problem so you you probably you're talking about the other buzz phrase in the, in the industry at the moment is customer experience so yep. that's a very important part of it do you feel that uh, there are other tourism bodies putting aside their their natural advantages, as you mentioned in the UK or, or the US, that are doing this frictionless planning or well, well or better than than you you guys are. I don't think anyone solved the planning part. I think the ones who do it really well at the moment are probably more smaller destinations. Uh, so I think Singapore does it quite well as a tourism board. I think their integration with TripAdvisor and really that whole live like a local element that they're building out is, is, is a nice execution. Um, and I think New Zealand fundamentally has has worked out what their target market is looking for. I mean, fundamentally, New Zealand largely is a, is a self-drive destination. Um, they're driving really well off that adventure category. They're very clear about what they are um, and what they're trying to sell. I think the difference is between us and New Zealand is we probably have um, nearly everything that New Zealand has to offer, probably short of a, of a competitive rugby team at the moment. Yeah, uh, don't mention the yeah, rugby. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but um, we also have much, you know, a whole bunch of other elements to what we're trying to achieve. You know, so whether that's you know, what you see in the, in the Northern Territory, the, the, the abundance of wildlife in the wild, the great food and wine offering, it's, it's a much more 
complex or diverse range of experiences that we've got here to sell in Australia, which is, it's, um, it's a great thing, but it also then in terms of how you connect through the consumer is, is much more much more difficult than what it might be for a single destination. I know you mentioned Chris Hemsworth before. A lot of uh, older Australians would remember the uh, Throw a Shrimp on the Barbie yep. campaign, which was incredible and changed the way Americans in particular thought about Australia. And I think any Australian who still goes to a, to the US still gets thrown that line when they talk to to older Americans. That was in for its day. That was incredibly innovative and no doubt very effective. Yep. Have you... Talk about the secret sauce. Have you had a secret sauce type of uh, approach ever since? Look, I think what we got with Hoag's in, in 1984 was not that different to what we're trying to achieve today. I mean, he encompassed the Australian, you know, I suppose the larrikin Australian at, at, at that time, but he, he brought out the Australian personality. Um, but essentially through that and being able to show the beauty of it, you know, he really was a spokesman at that time for the country. Um Look, you know, while we while we do use Chris and he embodies you know, a number of those elements, it's very different in a modern digital world. We view that there's not one spokesperson yeah. anymore. It's not hose. It's, you know, I would argue there's 24 million spokespeople, you know, sure. in our country, and let alone the 8.5 million who come here every day. So. We build from that. We think that at that time, Hoax was the spokesman for the country. Now it's really about how do you harness all of those voices and push them out in a digital Which probably it makes it harder because, as you say, it's, it's a more fractured media landscape and it's a more fractured world with you talking about digital and yeah. social media. It is fractured in terms of the amount of content and, and the amount of noise. And it's also the attention economy is, is very difficult, right? You know, we're all bombarded with thousands of pieces of advertising every single day. So trying to get someone's attention is hard um but it's also a little bit double-edged because fundamentally with what we with the tools we have today we can actually uh, find these people you know if you think about it logically we're trying to find the next eight and a half or nine million people who are going to fly in this country out of the entire planet but that is you know it, the digital equivalent of a needle in a haystack so being sort of fundamentally targeted and looking for those people who want to come here and and doing our uh, doing our best to, to motivate them to get on an aeroplane. Um, yes, it has complexity because of the digital landscape, but also it allows us to be far more um, effective in a digital world. Okay. We're coming to the end of our discussion. I just wanted to ask you, and we ask all of our guests this, mm-hmm. uh, which is crystal ball time. Where do you see digital marketing will be in five years' time, which in digital years is probably 50 years' time in the, in the real world? Yeah, look, I think... You know, fundamentally, it's a really interesting one. I mean, if I just take a travel analogy for a second, you know, if you look at, you know, Expedia was funded out of Microsoft, you know, 20 odd years ago. And what they talked about was an ability to ask a question in voice and someone spit out your dream holiday. That was, that was the dream of Expedia when it was launched in Microsoft. It's actually nearly there. Like, you know, if you think about, you know, where voice is going now with, with you know, Cortana and, and Siri, the ability for people to be able to join these, these data sets together. I think we're much closer to that. But So I think, you know, businesses over the next five years, the ones who are really successful are going to be the ones who understand their consumer best, the ones who are going to be, be able to find those really high-yielding people. So I think the ability of marketers to be able to mine that and find that. So whether there's more accountants or whether there's more data scientists, but certainly... There's going to be people from different fields who are helping that. But then once you find them, the ability to create compelling marketing experiences, that hasn't changed. So I think the ability to take on that new tech and go, how can I apply that to my business? How can I apply that to my customer is really going to be the, the critical piece. So look, it's, it's going to change um, fundamentally. But I think, you know, the ability for marketers to be open-minded and keeping their customer at the core will be the key to success and right now what organizations do you feel are doing it effectively not just in the tourism space yeah look from a personal perspective i think you know if you look at pandora spotify uh netflix you know they are very intuitive in their nature they're beautiful experiences they're learning from you i mean even the experience on youtube is, is quite iterative now so you know, people are getting used to the fact that it, this platform knows something about me and knows what I should be listening to, watching next, you know, which TV shows I'm going to like. That's that's now the norm. So the ability to 
be predictive, but then being able to still create great, compelling content is, is going to be key. Okay. Final question, John. And look, we've had so much fabulous content that's come from you and insights. I think everyone's going to be love this particular discussion. What are the top three tips you would give other marketers who are keen to succeed in digital as you have and as Tourism Australia does? You know, I, I said it earlier, it's, it's not to follow the bright, shiny thing. You know, keep your business problems at the core of what you're trying to do. But be, you know, look at other case studies, look at other elements of what people are doing and go, how could I apply that to my business? You know, so use the technology, use the innovations to try to solve business problems. Don't do the technology because it's good because you have some goal of being an innovative company or an innovative individual. So that's, Don't do it for the sake of doing it. Yeah, so, so avoid the bright, shiny objects. I think keeping the audience and the customer at the core um, and understand and just be you know, completely driven about understanding as much as you possibly can about that customer and what motivates them and using the tools today. And then I suppose thirdly is then continue to create world-class experiences because you know fundamentally this is where brands will live and die. You know, we can't continue to just serve banners and buttons we need to be able to serve compelling content because otherwise you're not going to be able to cut through the noise so that's that's, my three okay well they're good three and i love the the third one just continue to create compelling experiences and i think that's where we get a consistent theme coming with the people that we're speaking to and that is it's not about digital it's not about marketing it's about creating those customer experiences that are compelling and are memorable and encourage people to tell other people about it because obviously word of mouth is word of mouse call it what you will is still a very compelling thing absolutely john thank you very much for your time and, and for your insights i'm sure everyone's going to be taking a lot out of this and uh hope to speak to you again soon great thank you thanks wasn't that interesting as i say whether you're australian or from another country the way that governments the planning that goes into the tourism market in australia not to mention what obviously happens in other countries as well is truly fascinating for us as digital marketers and obviously that has that world has changed dramatically since the advent of social media digital marketing content marketing and of course uh, virtual reality which as john mentioned is uh, is an important part of the experience for people visiting the tourism australia website so thank you for joining us for episode nine and we look forward to speaking to you again very soon you just listened to the corporate digital marketing podcast If you have any suggestions about what you'd like us to talk about in future podcasts, email us at info at tickyes.com. For the transcript, links from this episode and other information, go to www.tickyes.com and click on the podcast.